everybody, this is Laura, City Scrapper. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel today. Today I have a layout that I made using the June My Creative Scrapbook Limited Edition Kit. And this month the kit features a Prima collection designed by Frank Garcia called the Neil Collection. This layout was kind of an experiment because I'm doing something new. Instead of using my die cutting machine to cut out one of the monthly cut files, I printed it out on my printer. I printed it and I had to print it out in two parts because the printer maximum size is 8.5 by 11 and of course my layout is 12 by 12. I taped the printed image down to a piece of heavyweight white cardstock and then I used a paper piercer and I pierced holes all along the pattern. Now I'm using some colored pencils because when I picked up the paper the pierced holes just look like a whole bunch of dots and I wanted to make sure that when I stitched them I was able to see the image. So I used different colors of colored pencil and then I referred to the printout of the pattern. It took me several hours to stitch all the flowers. I used several different colors for the flowers and for the leaves and then I used three different colors of blue for the circles that go around the page. Now that I'm all done with my stitching I trimmed the paper a little bit smaller and then I used a crop a dial and I rounded the corners and since the background is white I wanted to add a little bit of color around the outside of the layout. I gutted a piece of peach cardstock that I had in my stash and now I am attaching my stitched background to the peach paper and I use some ATG adhesive to adhere those two pieces together. And in the past, I used to really struggle with those gutted pieces of paper, especially when the paper wasn't too thick. A lot of times they would buckle. So now what I do is I'll attach a gutted out piece of paper to a 12 by 12 inch piece of paper that I know I'm not gonna use. And that helps me to work with the gutted pieces of paper a little more easily. The peach paper that I just mounted the background on, that was a little bit more than 11 inches. So I want to have a border that goes all around that and I'm using a piece of the pattern paper from this month's kit and I gutted that, attached it down to a piece of paper and now I'm attaching everything all together. I wanted to add something else to the layout without adding another color so I cut out a whole bunch of these white floral die cuts. I tucked them into the stitching. I'm not going to end up leaving those there. I just felt like the die cuts didn't quite go with the rest of the layout, something about the style of them, but they do stay there for a little while. The June kit had quite a number of pocket cards in it that coordinated perfectly with the pattern papers. I believe that the off-white card is a pocket card and then the blue card was cut out from one of the pattern papers. I selected a number of die cuts and chipboard pieces and other embellishments and now I'm using some Distress Oxide in Stormy Sky and I ink the edge of all of these elements and I'm going to include most of them on the layout. And now you can see that I added a whole pile of fussy cut butterflies to my pile of embellishments and I'm going to ink the edges of all of those butterflies as well and I'm again using that Stormy Sky distress oxide. Looking at that stack of butterflies right now, I am a little surprised about how many butterflies I included on this layout. So now I have all of my elements cut out and inked and I'm going to begin assembling the cluster that's going to go in the center of the embroidered circle. Now this pocket card was a frame so I thought I would cut out the center and then I could put a photo behind it. So I just punch a little hole with my scissors and then cut as carefully as I could around the oval. Now I'm inking the inside of the frame with the Distress Oxide. I like to do that with the dauber behind the element so that in case I slip a little bit, I don't get ink all over the front of the embellishment. And I'm not sure what photo I'm going to use right now. That frame is very small, so it's going to have to be a tiny photo. I was thinking I might have to print out a photo on my Canon selfie, but I wasn't sure at this point. So I'm just assembling this cluster so that I can put a photo in later. 
And I did that by only attaching the frame down in two corners and not in all four. And later on, I am able to easily put my photo behind that frame. There are a lot of little pieces on this cluster and I don't want any of them to fall off. So I'm putting a little bit of cardstock to hold everything together. And on top of that, I layer some fun foam. The tags that I have on this cluster are a little bit raised up from the rest of the background. So I thought that the fun foam would help raise the rest of the cluster up to the same height as the cluster is with the tags. I hope that that makes sense. So now I have my cluster arranged and I'm going to start attaching those butterflies down. You can see that I already have one of the larger butterflies. That's a chipboard butterfly that is attached right to the frame. And now I'm adding some of the smaller butterflies all around the layout. And I do tend to move things like this around a bit, but right now I'm just scattering the butterflies around the page. I realized that I didn't show you, but on the back of all of these butterflies are tiny pieces of foam on their wings. The butterflies are rather small, so the pieces of foam are extremely tiny, but I do like the added amount of dimension that those little pieces of foam give to the butterflies. Most of the butterflies on this layout are off-white. I also add a few pink and then later on some very small blue butterflies. Oh, there, one of them is uh, in the upper left-hand corner and another one in the lower right-hand corner. What develops over time as I'm adding these butterflies to the layout is that they start going in a diagonal from the upper left-hand corner to the lower right-hand corner. And something I've been noticing is that the majority of times that scrapbookers have a diagonal, it usually is from the upper left-hand corner to the lower right-hand corner. It's usually not the other way. I wonder if that has to do with our language and the fact that we read from left to right. I don't really know. And <laughs> Just an observation. In any case, now I'm adding some colored pearls to the layout. I have some on the embroidered flowers. And then I also added some to the butterflies. And I added a pearl to the center of the heart that's right under where the photo is going to go. I didn't have the right number of those dark, dark pearls. You could see that there's one on the largest flower and then one on the flower on the right hand side of the layout. I really needed one more of those, but I didn't have another one. So I decided I just had to go with a slightly lighter coral color for the flower at the top of the page. I'm also adding some blue pearls and I add those to the blue butterflies that are on the layout. And I don't include all the footage, but I continue to add those pink pearls around the layout. So you can see that I took all of those white die cuts off of the layout and I'm going to go with very similar die cuts. These are also white. These are also little buds or berries but I think that they are a little bit more subtle. I didn't like the bubble kind of look, that open circle that was in that other die, so I decided to go with these. These are my tried and true favorites. I love this die, and I think that this die cut is very subtle, but it still adds what I was looking for, a little bit of extra dimension or a little extra element for the page without adding a lot of color or actually any color because they're white. But now I'm going to punch a hole in this tag that's at the top of the cluster. Some of you who have been scrapbooking a long time might remember those tools from quite a while back. I have cut some ribbon from my stash to size and I'm putting the pieces of ribbon through those holes in the tags. And I'm going to use a little trick that I learned from Crafty Concepts with Erin. She doesn't tie or knot the ribbon she gets a very thin piece of twine and she ties a little bow around the ribbon. I'll be doing that in a little bit. I really like that idea and I think that it makes the layout look a little bit neater a lot of the time. So that's what I'm gonna do on this page. But right now I am still working on getting those ribbons through the holes in the tags and then positioning them so that they lie flat on the page. And now I'm taking that really thin piece of twine. This is a piece of twine from my stash that I got from Michael's quite a few years ago. It's an off-white color. I tied into a little bow around the ribbon on each of the tags. And then I just cut the excess cord off. 
and then I also cut all of the ribbons a little bit shorter. And then I continue to do the same thing to all three of the tags on the layout. So now I'm inking a piece of chipboard and it says, you are honey, and that's going to serve as my title, even though I still haven't decided what photo that I'm going to use. And now I'm repositioning some of the butterflies. You could see that that diagonal from the upper left-hand corner to the lower right-hand corner is a little more clear in the way that the butterflies are arranged. I decided to switch out that salmon colored tag for a pink tag. I liked the salmon, but since it was the only place on the layout other than the border where there was that exact color, I thought that it would look better to tie it in a bow and put it in a central place on the layout. So I'm using a little bit of ATG adhesive and I'm attaching that bow right over the chipboard piece that is my title. Then I decided that I wanted to put a border around the outside of the layout. I put it between the peach colored paper and the pattern paper in the background. I just thought that it would add a little bit of a detailed element to that outer part of the layout. Of course, it would have been much easier if I had decided to do this earlier before I had attached everything down. So I did struggle a little bit with getting it lined up and getting it in between those two pieces of paper, but I did end up getting it attached on all four sides of the layout. And then after I had that border attached, and by the way, I made that border with an American Crafts punch called a knockout punch that's from quite a few years back. I then added some pearl to each of the corners. First, I added a fairly large pearl to the corner, and then I thought that adding two pearls would look even better. So I ended up adding another pearl to each corner. And then I decided, and this was after looking at this layout for a couple of days, that I had too many different colors of pearls on the layout. I had blue ones and pink ones and salmon ones and just too many. So I decided that I was going to make all of the butterflies the same and have off-white pearls in the center of all of them. So I pulled off all the blue ones and all the pink ones and I replaced all of them. And I don't know if this makes any difference to you. To me, it seemed to make a difference. I just like the way it looks a little more cohesive. And now I'm adding a photo of my little dog, Rory, and I don't think that she goes with the whole vibe of this collection, but that picture just fit in there so perfectly, and I thought that she looked cute. So that was the photo I decided to go with. I think I could have made this layout better if I had done some stitching somewhere on the photo cluster. I think that would have brought the stitching from the outside into the cluster and might have kind of married the cluster with the stitching. I really like the idea of using a cut file as a guide for stitching, so I do plan to use it at some point in the future. And that completes this layout. Here are some close-ups. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, everybody. I really appreciate it, and I really hope you enjoyed it and got some ideas from it. In the description box, you'll find a link to the My Creative Scrapbook website. You can check out all of the beautiful current kits, and if you would like, you can subscribe to one of them. I hope that everybody has a fantastic day. I hope you're able to fit in some time for scrapbooking. I'm going to have some more of my creative scrapbook videos up on my channel this month, and I hope you'll join me for those. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.